Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God Almighty. Hallelujah. I'm coming to just drop off a quick prophetic word. Uh, some of this was for our group, but the Lord told me to come out here and give it this actual prophecy out on my main page. So we thank you, Father, for this word. In Jesus' name, we we just bless you, Lord, and we ask your presence on this line. We thank you, Lord. The Lord has told me there's going to be sudden creative miracles and there's going to be sudden creativity that the Lord is giving to the body of Christ. Sudden opportunities. God has said, read these scriptures right here. He's opening up certain sudden doors that things have, that people didn't know that they needed. And he's about ready to work in some areas of your, people's life that they didn't even know they needed work. So God said, I'm about ready to work and I'm going to do a quick work. So God said, I'm going to do a quick work. And there's going to be a lot of sudden miracles and creative miracles even. Because God's God has said, I've created at the end from the beginning. So I've created everything from the beginning. But there's a chapter in Isaiah 48 that says God created things now. Okay, so He most people think everything is predestinated. But actually, God said, I actually create things right now. And so things that you need that God... That you've been asking the Lord for, God said, I'm about ready to do a quick work and do some things now in your life that you have been praying about because I'm a God of all creation. I can do all things and I can change the times. I can change the seasons and I can change everything. So I want you guys to go to Isaiah chapter 48 and look at this. Isaiah 48 and 3, have I declared the former things from the beginning and they went forth out of my mouth, said God, and I showed you them. I did them suddenly, he said, and they came to pass. And then he says, because because I knew that thou art an obstinate and, and a stiff-necked people, and in sin you and thy brows were brass, I have an even from the beginning declared it to thee, said the Lord. Before it come to pass, I showed it to thee, lest thou shouldest say, My idol has done them, and my graven images and my molten images has created them. Now listen to this. Isaiah, listen to this. Isaiah 48 verse 6 and 7. It says, Thou has heard, see all this, and I will you not declare it? I have showed you these things, new things from this time, even hidden things, and thou didst not know them. And he says in verse 7 of Isaiah 48, they are created now. They are created now and not from the beginning. Hallelujah. They are created now and not from the beginning, even from before the day when thou heardest of them not, lest thou shouldest say, I knew them. So God's even saying, I'm going around all the prophets. I'm Surely the Lord God will do nothing lest he first reveal a secret unto his servants, the prophets. But the Lord is saying, there's things that the prophets, I'm even going to go and do some things. And even though I'm revealing my secret to the servants, the prophets, I'm still the God of all gods, and I'm the one who speaks to the prophets, so I'm going to be the one to go before and do work and create things, even now, said the Lord. He said, even those things I will create now, and he also gave me Isaiah 43. Now, look at, let's look at Isaiah 43, verse 9. Let all the nations gather together, and let the people be assembled, he said. Who among you shall declare this, and show us former things? Here we go. For then... For them bring forth their witnesses that they may be justified or let them hear and say it is truth. You are my witnesses, says the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen that you may know, that you may know and believe me and understand that I am he before me. There was no God formed, neither shall there be after me. And he says, even I am the Lord and beside me there is no other savior. I have declared, listen to this, I, I, God saying this, I have declared and saved. I have showed them. These were no strange God among you. Therefore, you are my witnesses, says the Lord God, that I am God. Now listen to this. you got to mark this verse down, Isaiah 43 and 13. He says, Yea, before the day was, I am he, and there is none that can deliver out of my hand. I will work, and who shall let it? He said, I will work, and who shall let it? So God said, I'm about to work, and who's going to be able to stop it? I'm going to work even if somebody's trying to stop you said God that I'm going to work and who's going to be able to stop it I'm going to create things now said the Lord I'm getting ready to create things now Isaiah 44 listen to this in 7 and who who as I shall call and shall declare it and set it in order 
set it in order for me since I appointed the ancient people and the things that are coming and I it shall come let them sh show unto them hallelujah so these, I, we, we were going through some things in one of our group talking about God showing us things and, and we can declare things and com even command you me God said to command me and remind me of the things and to bring things to pass so he said I'm going to show you those things to come but you got to come up in back into my presence you got to come back to me said the Lord and even as he was giving me these scriptures he said there will be secret riches in hidden places Isaiah 45 uh, 2 and 3 he said this is what I'm going to do I'm going to go before you and make the crooked places straight okay I'm going before you and making the crooked places straight and I will break in pieces the gates of brass and cut and sunder the bars of island so he's going to break those places in your life that you have not been able to get breakthrough this is going to be the sudden creativity now listen Listen, he's also going to open up to you ways and avenues of, of, of hidden riches of secret places. Because if you look over here in Isaiah, remember he says right here in Isaiah 48, he said, they are, Isaiah 48, 6 and 7, they are created now and not from the beginning. Okay, and he says, and says in uh, verse 6, thou hast heard, see all this, I will, will you not declare it? He says, I have showed you these new things from this time, even hidden things. Hallelujah. Even hidden things, and thou didst not know them. Why didn't you know them? Even as a prophet, you didn't. Even as an apostle, even as a pastor, you didn't know these things because they are created right now. This second, look at this. You better mark this down in your Bible, somebody. Uh, uh, Isaiah 48, verse 6 and 7. They are created, not created everything from the beginning. God does supernatural miracles and creative miracles now, suddenly. Look at verse Isaiah 48, uh, uh, verse 3. I showed them unto you, I did them suddenly, and they came to pass. And they came to pass then, there, and then. Okay, so when Isaiah 43... Uh, 45, uh, 2 and 3, and he's saying, I will give thee the treasures of darkness, and here we go again, the hidden riches of secret places, the hidden riches of secret places, that thou mayest know that I am the Lord, which call thee by thy name, the God of Israel. So why was he going to give you this treasures of darkness, these secret riches of hidden places? Because, so it can establish his name, to establish this name, not to establish our name, not to establish, uh, you know, our popularity, but God said, I'm going to show you this because I hold up my word above my name. And this is what I've been teaching the people over in the group. God holds up his word over his name. So even if there's prophets running out, out, round out here that aren't living right, God, the gifts and callings of God are without repentance. Romans 11 and 29. And so they can still be operating in a high level of prophecy and gifts. But if God's not pleased with them, he's not going to back up their word. He's going to back up his word. Okay. But they're using a lot of divination. And this is where I, the Lord told me, go ahead and go this direction. So I'm going to take it. They're using divination to trick a lot of people. And so the Lord gave me uh, Amos uh, 3, and this is where he says, Amos 3 and 7, Surely the Lord God will do nothing lest he first reveal a secret unto his servants, the prophets. But what, what happens is everybody takes one verse, uh, one verse of Scripture. you got to read the whole chapter of Amos chapter 3 and see what God is saying. He's saying, can two walk together unless they be agreed? First of all, that's what he's saying. And then if you look at uh, Amos chapter 2, you got to look at this. This is a time of great rebellion against God. And this is what God is saying in Amos chapter 2. Uh, he says, and they they lay themselves down upon... Listen to this. This is what he said. Let's start at verse 7. Amos 2, 7. Uh, that pant after dust of the earth and the head... Uh, and and the head of the poor, okay, they're afflicting the poor, this is what the Lord's saying, okay, thus says the Lord God, for their transgressions of Israel, and for four, I will not turn away their punishment, listen to, a lot of you are going through punishment because you're oppressing the poor, okay, this is, and this wasn't going to be a part of this message, but it is now, okay, therefore became they sold the righteous for silver and the poor uh, for a pair of shoes, can you imagine that? They sold the poor for a pair of shoes and that pant after the dust of the earth on their head and the, of the poor and turn aside the way of the meek 
and they turn aside. They go against those who are trying to be meek and serve God. And a man and his father will go in unto the same maid, unto the same woman, and profane my holy name, said God. So much of this has to do with your level of holiness and purity because the holiness in the church has gone all the way down and God's wanting to do this new creative thing, but many people aren't going to be able to access it because their level of holiness and purity isn't up. And so he said they, they lay themselves down upon clothes. Doesn't this sound like our, our society today? Led to pledge by every altar and they drink the wine of the, of the condemned in the house of their own God. God. This is the religious spirit that we're fighting against. This is why God got us going off and setting apostolic houses and prayer houses and hubs and groups and getting off this, this main platform in some areas, okay? We got to get out of this religious thing because these people will be cursed and they're not going to be able to get these fulfillment of prophecies, you know, because there's this 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 plumb line in, in that, thank you, Holy Ghost, there we go. The plumb line, Amos talks about this plumb line is coming down on the house of God. And when that plumb line comes, it's going to be too late. We've been talking about the door. You know, we got to get in through that door. And so that plumb line, here's Amos right now in Amos 2 and 9, yet destroyed I the Amorite before them. Listen to this, who, uh, whose height was as the height of the cedars, and he was strong as the oaks, yet I destroyed his fruit from above and his roots from beneath. So don't think, don't matter how big a ministry you have, don't matter how big a prophet, how big a pastor, how big a mega church you got, God said, I'll destroy your fruit, because look at how big the Amorite was, okay? I can destroy your fruit from above and rip out your roots from beneath in the name of Jesus. So you got to understand God's serious here right now. Also, I brought you up from the land of Egypt, which is the word bondage, and I let you led you 40, through, 40 years through the wilderness to possess the land of the Amorite, and I raised up your sons for prophets and your young men for Nazarites. Is it not even thus, O ye children of Israel, says the Lord? He says, but you have given the Nazarite wine to drink, and you commanded the prophets, saying, prophesy not to us. And, they, and later on he says, prophesy to us good things, prophesy to us good things. And, and then he goes on and says, behold, I am pressed under, I am pressed under you as a cart is pressed, hallelujah, that is full of sheaves. So some of you aren't able to move because it's like a cart. God's weight is on you so heavy like a cart pressing you down. So this is where you want to fall in and get back into holiness, get back into seeking the Lord and get back into the purity of life because God wants to release these suddenly and he's creative. And this is the other side of it so that you know how to get out of it. Okay. And verse 14 says, therefore the flight shall perish from the swift. Listen to this. This is when people start losing interest energy and ministry and they can't do what they used to do okay because god sometimes it's god right here you got to mark this down in your bible this is all rhema this is all coming from, straight from the throne room i wasn't going to go here okay so so amos 2 okay mark this all down uh, 11 through uh, 14 so he's saying the flight shall perish from the swift and the strong shall not shall not strengthen his force neither shall the mighty deliver himself or herself, right? My God, Holy Ghost. And so he's saying, Neither shall he stand that handeth the bow, and he that is swift of foot shall not deliver himself, neither shall he that rideth the horse deliver himself, and he that is courageous among the mighty shall flee away naked in that day, says the Lord. So it don't matter how tough you think you are, how bad you are, how, you know, if God takes it away, he's going to take it away. And he says in, uh, he says in Psalm 75 that promotion doesn't come from the north, south, east, and west. It comes from the Lord, and he raises up one and puts down another. And so don't think that God won't uh, uh, push you out of the way if you're uh, oppressing God's people. So no more of that. And that's the other side of the coin, okay? So God's saying in verse, when we get to Amos 3, can two walk together unless they're agreed? Amos 3 and 3, there's those threes. Amos 3 and 3, unless you and I are agreed and along with you and, and the other body members of the body of Christ because Paul said many of you are sick and weak and sickly among you because you haven't properly discerned the body of Christ and 1 Corinthians chapter 11, which means the body of Christ are your brothers and sisters, the other members in the body of Christ, but you haven't properly discerned them. So many of you are weak and sick among 
uh, us, okay? And so God's saying it's time to come back to holiness right now and this access to the area of creativity and creative miracles. And God said this is just a, a, a supernatural portal of creativity open up even for your ideas uh, uh, like Proverbs 8 and 12. He'll give you a knowledge of witty inventions and ideas for your businesses and everything. But he wants you to come back into this purity and this holiness and come back to him, said the Lord, and don't oppress the poor. When I bring up you, when I give you these secret riches and hidden places, hidden riches and secret places, Isaiah 45 and 3, when I give you that all, don't, you know, don't oppress the poor. Make sure you keep helping the poor, okay? So that's what the Lord's saying, because this is about ready to open this portal, which will open a financial portal. And actually, I got a scripture to confirm that in Nehemiah chapter 13, uh, a couple other chapters where they are being oppressed and they actually, the Jews, uh, the political system, as they were, Nehemiah was building the walls and I'll go in that in the group later on today. But they, they, they literally changed the whole political system because many of them had mortgaged their houses and their lands and all that. And they uh, actually, you know, they were being oppressed, which is a Sambiel type spirit, but we'll talk about that later. But this spirit that oppressed them is also oppressing the people in America and all around the world. This is that political spirit and it's it's oppressing people but what happened there was a breakthrough for the whole uh uh for the whole economy there in Nehemiah. And so the Lord's also showing me that these uh, hidden riches of secret places will be opening up uh, a new economy into the body of Christ. And I also had prophesied that, that the, that the economy of heaven was coming into the economy of earth, into the church. But this is a new revelation. The Lord's showing me that that actually that they mortgaged their houses and lands and all because there was a dearth in the land and they actually had to, to, to pay tribute to the King. Okay. Just like we have to pay, our taxes and we're having to pay uh you know for uh overpayment for our mortgages and our insurances and all that but god said there's about something ready to about shift in the supernatural where some creativity that he's going to do a creative miracle now that is going to cause us to get back our lands and our mortgages and everything that the government has stolen and so this is a rhema word coming straight out this was not planned out we thank you for it holy ghost we receive it in jesus name we thank you so God said, get ready for some things that are going to change and suddenly. And so bring yourselves back into purity. Bring yourself back into holiness before the Lord. And God's ready to open up these creative miracles, these creative opportunities I see. And also these, these hidden riches of secret places, said the Lord. Hidden riches of secret places. Make sure that you stay in that secret place and you're, 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 you come, you cleanse. Let the Lord cleanse out whatever's in your life uh, and bring it into purity because that you will be able to qualify for these miracles. In Jesus' name, Lord, we thank you. Hallelujah.